I'm talking to Richard Moore, who has stayed as a alternate uh, guest, and uh, Brian Elgood from Seabank Capital. We're talking about giving the stock or the profitable item that you have, which has earned a capital gain that would have been taxable, if you give that straight to uh, something like the Nature Trust or the Salvation Army or the Union Gospel Mission, any capital gains that you have earned on that property is not taxable to you, but you get a full tax deduction. And for the record, to put it into context, if you did have something that you'd paid a buck for and now it's got a $10,000 capital gain, if you give it to the Conservative, Conservancy, the VSO, the Victoria Symphony Orchestra, the Vancouver, the Toronto, doesn't matter what it is, wherever you're watching this in Canada, the $10,000 becomes a charitable donation to you, and you will get back about $4,400 in tax credits because of your charitable donation. That's, that much, that's the cash you get back. At the same time, you don't have to pay tax on the $10,000. Now, if you sold the item and you got the $10,000 capital gain, you'd have to pay tax on $5,000, depending on your tax record. That, your tax bracket, that could be as much as 2,200 in BC and 2,700 in Ontario. If you then only have $7,300 left to give, you give the $7,300 to the charity, then the charity is you're only going to get 45 so you get about $2,800 back from your charitable gift instead of the 4400 that you might get, that you absolutely get back if you give the, the whole thing. So you've made 4400 instead of 28 so you've made something like $1,600 better to the game in the example that I gave, and everyone's going to be a different example. In the case that Richard's talking about, where you buy yourself a flow-through share, am I should, should I be taking a break right now, Richard? No. If um, if you're buying a, fl a flow-through share, and you get yourself a mining tax credit or an um, employer stock option tr credit or whatever is around in your thing, those credits are sort of yours. They reduce your capital, your adjusted cost base of the stock. If the stock then actually sells for the same amount you paid for it, that's all a capital gain. And the capital gain, if you give it to the charitable, is worth whatever that amount is. So that's why Richard says that you can actually make money by giving it away rather than taking it and selling it. And that's what Brian's trying to get across, too, that if you give your money to the charity. So if you happen to be a cross-border play person, then Seabank Capital, with all due respect, is the only place to deal with. Because if you've got an account at RB, I'm just doing all the talking here. Uh, if you've got an account at RBC and you move to San Diego, and you tell RBC that I moved to San Diego and uh, here's my new address, so they can't talk to you anymore because they're not licensed to deal with you in the state of California, let alone in the states. If you move to Seattle, they can't deal with you either. If your account's with TD Waterhouse and you move across the border, they can't deal with you. Now, if you've got an RRSP with TD Waterhouse or RBC, they can continue to deal with you if you were a existing client under the NAFTA rules. But again, technically, RBC and TD Waterhouse are not supposed to buy and sell within the plan. Not supposed to. That's illegal because they're not licensed to do that. They can keep your account, but they can't trade the account. So you can get stuck with something that you didn't want in your plan. But Seabank Capital, in the form of Dan Walco, who is not making it tonight, traffic, whatever, Christmas, uh, Seabank Capital is licensed to deal with you in the state of California or the state of Arizona. Or they can deal with you if you go down and you're the only client that they have in some of the states. Uh, they can deal with you if you're the only client, the only person they've got there because they can deal with a limited number in any state if there's a multiples, and I don't know what the figure is, and Dan Walker would have to tell you, I don't know whether it's five or 15 people, then you just go get yourself licensed yep. in that state and carry on. So if you are a cross-border person, place to deal with C-Bank Capital, um, I have to, I, I can't, even though I love Dan and he's a great guy, I have to mention as well, there's a fellow named Daryl Thompson. If you happen to be in Toronto and 
you're there. Daryl Thompson does the same thing to Backmount Securities, and uh, Daryl's also a good guy. Uh, so there are some others. There aren't very many people that you can do it with, though. And uh, when you deal with C Bank, you deal with the a limited number of people in a boutique that is only set up to do that. And as much as I love Daryl and Blackmont Securities, it's not their business. It's just that Daryl's made himself possible to do that. And a fellow named Don Risling, who's the original set it up when Blackmont was Yorkton Securities, at great expense so that they could do it. But hardly anybody participated. So by joining Dan, you have joined a visionary operation. Brian, just exactly. as visionary. Dan is a marvelous individual. Anyway, I can't. Is there something that I missed here that you wanted to talk about? Well, the only other thing I was going to say is that we can help um, Americans and Canadians with this one. When you talked about someone going to San Diego, if you do go to San Diego and you want to make a contribution to the VSO here in Canada, um, we've got a way we can help you do that as well. Again, really? we specialize in the cross-border business. That's yet another thing we can assist you with. So charity, charity, and charities. Right. Good stuff. We're going to have some other talks about that. I don't think I don't think there's anything more. I'm going to come back and we'll answer some tax questions after this, I guess. Okay, let's take a break for a bit. All right.